Roughly 1,500 years old, narrated in 24,000 verses and told in 480,000 words, the Sanskrit epic Ramayana forms part of the single most important body of literature in ancient Indian lore, the Etihasa. Along with Ramayana, the Etihasa consists of another Sanskrit epic, the Mohabharata, and a collection of olden lore and legends in the Puranas, which is a large group of Sanskrit sacred writings containing Hindu legends and folklore. Ramayana is an epic poem that chronicles the story of how Prince Rama rescued his wife Sita from the hands of the demon King Ravana. Despite being only considered as a deeply meaningful literature, most experts agree that Ramayana is a product of mythology rather than an artifact of actual history. In most recent years, however, this previously unshaken academic assumption has become the subject of a much historical controversy. In Ramayana, the great Hindu poet and sage Valmiki makes a lot of mention of Rama Situ, a bridge over the ocean that connects India and Sri Lanka. Ramayana Ramayana tells the story of how Prince Rama was forced into relinquishing his throne as the crown prince of Ayodhya. Following his dethronement, the former prince along with his wife Sita and his brother Lakshmana went into exile. The three spent 14 years traveling across the deep forests of ancient India. As events unfolded, however, all hell broke loose in one of their forest's journeys when Rama's wife Sita was abducted by the ten-headed demon king Ravana. In an effort to get his wife back, Rama gathered a large army that consists of a group of monkey soldiers called called Vanaras. In the story, Rama led his army from the mainland, which is modern-day India, into the island of Lanka, which is modern-day Sri Lanka, where Sita has been held captive by the Demon King. There he waged war against the Demon King, and a battle of epic proportions broke out. But in the end, Rama was able to destroy Ravana. The tale ends with the return of Prince Rama and Sita to their home kingdom, where the prince was finally crowned as the new king. In Ramayana, Rama was originally unable to lead his forces of Vanaras across the ocean to the island of Lanka. As such, the prince sought the help of the sea god, who gave him the precise instructions on how to build a bridge across the ocean. These included seeking the help of the Veneras in constructing a floating bridge. The Venera complied to Rama's request by building a causeway made with rocks and boulders. They did this by writing Rama's name onto the stones, rocks, and boulders and tossing them into the ocean. It took the Veneras five days to complete the bridge Rama Situ. Once in place, Rama used the Rama Situ to move his army across the ocean and into the island of Lanka. Because Ramayana has always been considered a work of fiction rather than an actual record of the past, the Rama Situ War Rama's Bridge in turn was always believed to be a fictional bridge rather than an actual bridge. But in recent years, thanks to advanced satellite imagery technology, NASA has revealed photos of a land formation that appears to have been a causeway of sorts. This strip of land, although broken, appears to have at some point in the past extended across the ocean, thus bridging a part of modern-day India into modern-day Sri Lanka. Today, this land formation is best known as Rama's Bridge, in reference to the Rama Situ mentioned in the Ramayana. Rama's Bridge is a long stretch of land connection that consists of shoal and sandbank. It bridges the Rameshwaram Island in India and the Manar Island in Sri Lanka. And although most part of it is submerged underwater, it forms a solid but intermediate pathway that connects India to Sri Lanka. The records kept at Rameshwaram Temple indicate that the bridge maintained above sea level and was passable on foot until sometime in the 15th century, when it was finally submerged in water by a great storm. Both the peoples of India and Sri Lanka has long been aware of the existence of the bridge as made appearance by the prominence of the Sanskrit epic Ramayana. And since ancient times, the sea that separates India and Sri Lanka has been referred to as Sethru Samadram, which directly translates to Sea of the Bridge. People in the West, on the other hand, first heard of Rama's bridge through Kurtabe, a Persian cartographer who lived in the 9th century. The cartographer made a mention of the bridge in his book of Roads and Kingdoms. In the book, he called called it Set Bandai, which means a bridge of the sea. In the early 19th century, a British cartographer prepared a map of the area and referred to the bridge as Adam's Bridge. The name was derived from an Abrahamic Islamic myth that speaks of Adam falling into a mountain in Sri Lanka and using the bridge to cross to mainland India. Today, a good number of Orthodox Hindus believe that the existence of Ramasitu is in itself an unmistakable and undeniable proof of the Ramayana being a part of actual real-life history. In in an effort to bolster its perceived historical value, believers have put out historical inscriptions, travel guides, dictionary references, and even old maps that validate the existence of Rama Situ as the same exact bridge featured in Ramayana. In 2002, NASA released photographs that show an almost unbroken chain of limestone shawls between the southeastern coast of India and the northwestern coast of Sri Lanka. These photographs renewed the mytho-historical interest in Rama's bridge. Since then, many mainstream scientists, historians, and 
academics have repeatedly tried to debunk the pseudo-historical claims that surround the existence of Rama's Bridge, making it perfectly clear that the structure in question wasn't so much of a man-made bridge, but a natural land formation of sorts. There remains much debate and conflicting claims on the origin and nature of the structure. Among the most prominent theories offered by mainstream science is that Rama's Bridge is in fact a chain of barrier islands that resulted from the natural process of sand deposition and sedimentation that has occurred over long periods of time. Another explanation offered by mainstream scientists is the possibility that the land masses of India and Sri Lanka may have actually been connected at some point in time in the old world making Rama's Bridge an ancient shoreline. But in a rather confusing fashion, various scientific studies offer different definitions on what Rama's Bridge actually is. It has been described as a chain of shoals, an extended stretch of coral reefs, a sequence of barrier islands, a sandbar, and a narrow strip of land among other things. But for all the speculations and explanations offered by mainstream science, much of the scientific community has yet to arrive at an acceptable consensus on what Rama's Bridge is exactly. But over the years, modern day scientists, historians, and academic researchers have repeatedly made clear what Rama's Bridge is not. They do not believe that Rama's Bridge at any point in time was a man-made structure. It was not built by any ancient civilizations full of uh, magical monkey soldiers 2,500,000 years ago. But here's the thing, okay, it's pretty unlikely that it was built by a group of flying monkeys like in the Wizard of Oz, but what if the bridge was built by an ancient civilization? Now at present, it is widely regarded in mainstream science that civilized life on the planet began about 4,800 years ago. Scientists, historians, and academic researchers, among others, point to the fact that there is no substantial body of evidence whatsoever that supports the existence of a civilization predating ancient Sumerian and Egyptian societies, both of which are generally considered to be the earliest civilizations in prehistory. Experts point out that the absence of evidence supporting the existence of a far older civilization plays directly in favor of the current accepted timelines of civilizational and cultural development. But this is also where the growing interest in Rama's Bridge and Ramayana comes in. According to Hindu tradition, the events that unfolded in Ramayana took place during the Treta Yuga, which is presently considered a mythological period in time that began 2,165,000 years ago and lasted until 869,000 years ago. And if we set aside any mythical exaggerations alluded to in Ramayana, then assuming the possibility that Rama's Bridge was at some level man-made would place the structure well outside the generally accepted timeline, the existence of which would consequently imply the existence of a civilization that far predates ancient Sumerian and Egyptian societies. This topic again falls into one of my favorites on this channel, is covering civilizations, advanced civilizations, that could have existed tens, hundreds, or millions of years ago. And again, like I just mentioned, modern civilizations were said to have begun around 5,000 years ago, and modern humans were said to have came into existence 200,000 years ago. And of course, there was a report recently that says it might have been 300,000 years ago. But here's the thing, basing everything we know about human civilizations based on evidence that we have found, but that's kind of like saying going fishing in the ocean and only catching tuna does come into the conclusion that the ocean is only filled with tuna. So do I believe that magical monkeys from Oz built this bridge? Probably not. But do I believe this was a bridge built by some ancient advanced civilization a long time ago? I think that's a possibility. But let me know what you guys think in the comments. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you later.